Hello everyone, welcome to ICA International. In the year 2015, we have started our offline coaching classes for the CUCET aspirants for the various PG courses. And over 180 students are placed in central universities across India. So, this year we are going to start our online coaching classes for the CUCET aspirants for their PG admissions in central universities. So when you talk about the chemistry subject, where we have the simplified notes and tricks to crack problems. Also we have the previous and expected MCQs with solutions and video classes, the mock test with answer key. So I'm sure that this will definitely help you to crack the CUCET entrance examination, also other entrance examinations, which will be also helpful for your competitive examinations. So when you move on to the subject, we are going to talk about VSEPR theory and the prediction of the geometry of the molecule. So we have studied about the VSEPR theory in our lower classes which was developed by Gillespie and Naiho. So the geometry of the individual molecules can be predicted by the number of electron pairs surrounding the central atom. Here we are going to make use of the number of sigma bond and lone pair electrons in the surrounding, surrounding the central metal atom to predict the geometry of the molecules. So when you have two sigma bond and zero lone pair electron, you are going to get a linear molecule. In the case of two sigma bond and one lone pair electron, you are going to get a bent shaped molecule. Similarly, if you are going for two sigma bond and two lone pair of electron, again you are going to get a bent shaped molecule. And if you have two sigma bond and three lone pair of electron, you are going to get again the linear molecule. So we have four classification in case of two sigma bond category where the first one is with zero lone pair and the last one is with three lone pair which are giving the same shape, linear shape and in between these two are with one lone pair and two lone pair will give you the bent shape which is also similar. Moving on to the three sigma bond category you have three categories there, three sigma bond plus zero lone pair will give you trigonal planar shape. When you have three sigma bond and one lone pair, you will get a pyramidal shape. Similarly, when you have three sigma bond and two lone pair, you are going to get a T shape. So this is the category with the three sigma bond. So you have three different shapes here, trigonal planar, pyramidal and T shape. Now we will move on to the four sigma bond category. When you have four sigma bond and zero lone pair, we are going to get a tetrahedral shape. And when it goes to the four sigma bond, one lone pair electron, we are going to get C so structure. C so. And when it is four sigma bond and two lone pair of electron, we are going to get a square planar structure. So this is the classification with the four sigma bond category. You have three different structures here, tetrahedral, C so 
and square plan. Moving on to five sigma bond category, where you have five sigma bond and zero lone pair. We are going to get a trigonal bipyramidal structure. When you are going for phi sigma bond and one lone pair of neutron, we are going to get a square pyramidal structure. And when we have phi sigma bond and two lone pair of electron, we are going to get a pentagonal planar structure. So this is the category with phi sigma bond. So there are three types. One you are going to get trigonal bipyramidal, another one is square pyramidal, and the third one is pentagonal planar structure. So next we will move on to the six sigma bond category. When you have six sigma bond and zero lone pair, you are going to get Very famous structure which you have studied in your lower classes, which is octahedral. And if you have six sigma bond and one lone pair, you are going to get a similar type of structure, which is known as distorted octahedral. So this is the category, two types with the six sigma bond and the last one which we are going to discuss about is seven sigma bond, where we have seven sigma bond and zero lone pair of electron, we are going to get pentagonal bipyramidal structure. pentagonal bipyramidal. So I am sure that you have understood about the bond, bond, sigma bond category and lone pair category. When you are getting different lone pair and sigma bond combinations, how the structure changes. Now we will discuss about one example. I will give you one example. You have XCF2 molecule. XCF2 molecule. So you are supposed to predict the geometry of the molecule. We know that XC xenon is in 18 degrees, 18 degree filament, and fluorine comes in 17 degrees. So we can easily say that xenon has 8 electron in its outermost shell, whereas fluorine has 7 electron in its outermost shell. So We have xenon and fluorine. So I have represented xenon here and fluorine here, which is having seven electrons here in the outer shell for, for fluorine and eight electrons for the xenon. So one electron of xenon is joined with the one electron of fluorine to form a bond, a sigma bond, and the other electron of xenon is joined with another fluorine electron which is forming another sigma bond. So we have here two sigma bond and remaining lone pair electron on the central metal atom is three. Three and P. So two sigma bond and three lone pair of electron will give you a linear molecule. So this is how when you are getting a molecule, you are going to predict the shape of the molecule or geometry of the molecule without directly going to the hybridization of the molecule. You can directly, if you know in which group the element is present, you can directly predict the geometry of the molecule.
So in connection to this one, we can talk about the hybridization of hybridization of for uh, monovalent elements. So for monovalent molecules, hybridization. So hybridization we can predict. I'll give you an example. The same thing, xenon F2, XCF2. In the case of this one, xenon is bonded to two fluorine atoms, which is monovalent. Fluorine is monovalent. So two monovalent atoms. So you can predict the hybridization where the equation is number of valence electrons on the central atom plus number of monovalent element Number of monovalent element joined to the central metal atom divided by 2 will give you the hybridization. So here, number of valence electrons on central atom which will include all the electrons even which is bonded to the fluorine atom also. So it has 8 electrons, 8 plus and number of monovalent elements, there are 2 fluorine atoms joined here, 2 divided by 2 will give you 10 by 2 which will be 5 so 5 indicates that it will have sp 3 d hybridization sp 3 d hybridization so this is only in the case of monovalent elements when we are going for the divalent elements The equation changes as hybridization will be number of valence electrons on the central atom divided by 2. For example, SO3 molecule. SO3 molecule. We know that both sulfur as well as oxygen both are present in the 16th group. So sulfur has 6 electrons in the outermost shell and divided by 2. So as per the formula, number of valence electrons on the central atom it is 6 divided by 2 will give you 3 which stands for sp2 hybridization. So hope that you have understood the chemistry behind the geometry of the molecule and hybridization of monovalent as well as divalent elements or molecules. And you have enjoyed it. For more details, visit our website www.icainternational.in. Please visit the website and make use of our facilities. Thank you.